it, it's not that we want to what uh, provocative no i don't think so that's not the culture of past it's not at all It is 6.09. You're listening to Inside Story with Sharmila and Sharad. And as we said, we have in the studio with us today, Dr. Halima Ali, MP for Kappa Slango, as well as member of PAS Central Committee. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Halima. Thank you, Sharmila. Thank you for bringing me here. So uh, let's start with, I think, a little bit about your own background, right? Mm -hmm. um, was your family particularly political? Did you have a lot of discussions on politics growing up? No. This is, uh, well, I was said by chance or, you know, you call it Paxarela. <laughs> <laughs> there was no politicians in our family. But that's basically it. Yeah. Okay, so you were born in 1960, um, and that puts you in the 60s category, part yeah. of my <laughs> demographics. I'm very pleased to be speaking to somebody from, in some sense, my generation, mm -hmm. in Marudi, Sarawak. It seems like yeah. a very rural part of uh, the country. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, what was politics like for you? How did you encounter that as a young person? Oh, well, basically, as you said, it was a very rural area and I grew up there, I went to school there. And uh, you don't talk much about politics, especially in that area. It's basically, you know, a just copy-paste kind of thing, you know. And, and Barisa National was always the, uh, the representative there. So there's nothing, there's no fights, no, not much, you know. So uh, in our families, it's also so quite kind of acceptable phenomenon, <laughs> five-yearly phenomenon. Yeah. So then what uh, kind of shifted for you? When did you start becoming politically conscious? What got you there? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, during the reformacy uh, time, no, actually I was, uh, uh, I and my husband, I've got to get my husband in, <laughs> my husband. Who's also a medical doctor, I understand. Yes, exactly. And uh, that was during that uh, Sri Anwar Ibrahim. You know, he was a student leader. He went all over the place, including where I started, Australia. So that was an uh, awareness among the students that you need to be uh, alert about what's going on in your nation and all that. Uh, you have to have that voice and all. But uh, 19... Uh, 99, my husband was asked by PAS to be a candidate for PAS. Uh, and during that time, that was the reformacy time, remember? So, and uh, he lost 2,000 plus uh, to BN. And he said, that's the first and the last. So <laughs> by 2004, PAS has got somebody else to replace him. So because we were on the same background and all that, we had got a clinic there. So I was, by default, I suppose, <laughs> it was the candidate for pass. Yeah, yeah but so you began, if we look at your electoral history, you actually contested for a state seat before you be, uh, contested many, many years later for a parliamentary seat, right? Yes, exactly. So, um, so you, you're saying that you were a known name, uh, within the uh, the locality constituency, it, yeah, yeah, but so okay, so you had many choices. Uh, by then, you could have joined the PKR. You mm -hmm. could have joined, you know, Amana. Oh, no, no, Amana was not uh, uh. then in, in existence. Why did you choose PASS? What was that that attracted you to the party? No, PKR wasn't born then. In 1990, there was no PKR yet. Okay, so and there was only basically two big political parties uh, that we that we can choose from. One is AMNO and one of course is PAS. Being somebody who's principle centered, I I want something uh, which is based on principles. It's not just by populist uh, philosophies, you know. It's not just being pragmatic. It's not just following the trends of the, the citizens. But it got to be based by uh, real principles, universal values. So I, I studied this. So that's why I brought this. This is the past constitution. Uh, I don't just follow people. So I read it and... and uh, see what is going on. It is, is it worth my time, worth my effort, worth my energy, you know? So when I studied it, I said, okay, this is uh, what we can accept. That's basically it. 
Dr. Halima, if we look at um, you know prior your prior to your political career, mm-hmm. you studied in Australia. Yeah. Um, in fact, in the University of Tasmania, Hobart. Yeah. Um, you studied medicine. Yeah. Now, often Australia is seen as a model for uh, liberalism, for democratic governance. How did this shape your own outlook uh, about so-called Western forms of politics? Given your current party allegiance, mm-hmm. why did you choose this more traditionalist model? Uh, Well, I did my matriculation there too, okay? And uh, of course, uh, as far as development is concerned, you know, uh, the openness and all that, that's okay. But then, I, because I was a teenager, remember? <laughs> I was a teenager. <laughs> so my colleagues, my friends, my college friends, my university friends, yeah, that, that is that level of this first class world. But then they've got this mental stress. Okay, I'll show you one, uh, one example. Uh, one of my classmates, my medical student classmate, was the son of a professor, and his mother was a, a, a also a doctor. At the end of the day, uh, by the fifth year, we had six years. That's uh, well, quite a long one <laughs> for for uh, uh, medical uh, medicine. He had to be uh, thrown out from the university from medicine. Mm. Why? Because of drugs because of drugs. And uh, actually, he had a very good life. You know, he had got good parents. I mean, they are intelligent. But then they've got a lot of social problems, mental stress and uh, looking for something which you cannot find. You can, you ca- there's some emptiness there. And I saw that quite a lot. Yeah, I saw that quite a lot. So there must be something else besides just the physical stuff. Yeah. So you're relating, if I can just follow up, you're relating the kind of social problems you saw in Australia to a, a gap in their lives. Is that the... Yeah. And, and therefore, but is... It, so the, the pushback would come, the, people are in drugs everywhere in the world, including, uh, I think, some of the highest indices. Well, uh, actually, I was going to say, Kelantan has the highest number of drug abuse cases. Yeah, so that's path-led. I mean, the question really is... Um, you know, why did you think a political party and a political movement could address mm-hmm. this existential question, the question of uh, a lack of moral compass or a lack of uh, uh, purpose in life? Pass is not, not just a political party, just like any other political parties. Uh, I just uh, address what you said, uh, Shamila, about the Kelantan being said one of the highest drug addicts. You see Kelantan, uh, there is the, uh, the river Golo there, which if it dries up in the drought season, you can just, just walk through that river without even the, the boats and all that, you see. And uh, that, that's one of the problems that uh, they are facing, including Kedai and Perlis, I think, too, because of the boundary. You know? And uh, also in Borneo, in Borneo, you know, uh, the Kalimantan borders, uh, you can just cross there. Uh, that's not uh, an excuse, but uh, I'm, I've got a helicopter kind of philosophy of life, okay? So you look ov- ov- overall, look at the, the bigger picture, you know, and not just one isolated uh, issues and things like that. You look at it overall. So uh, it's, I was just mentioning drugs, but it's not just drugs. It's, uh, you know, breakups and uh, attempted suicides, all kinds of things. That was many decades ago, you know. Uh, that's the kind of thing that I was facing, and they were looking for something. And uh, I was, uh, as I said, I studied. I studied. I, I, I didn't really uh, uh, get deeply involved in it because I was taking medical medicine, you see. I got to be in a spot, hospital. I got to read books. I got to remember the I got a lot of exams. And uh, we had virus every week. It's my university, so it's quite a tough, tough life. It was in real politics at that time. We have actually a voice note that is related to what you were talking about earlier, Dr. Halima, yeah. this notion of past being more than a party. Yeah. Uh, this is from Albert. I just want to ask Juan Halima, is past a political party or religious organization? Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, PAS is a political party in the sense that it is going into the elections and following all this uh, uh, election 
agenda, following what is SPR is doing and all that. So that is political party. But the uh, the uh, the policy of past is based on Islam, and Islam is not just what usually the uh, the masses may. Uh, Assume it is. It's not just a religion. It's not just a ritual. Islam in past means a way of life. Uh, for example, good governance is a universal value, and that is Islamic. Uh, to be accountable, uh, even though there's no SPRM, there's no police, and uh, the, the voters don't even know what you're doing, but uh, God knows it. So that's the basic guiding principles of past. So uh, it's, it's both. It's not just a religious uh, body, but it's also it's a, a political party based on these universal values. And that universal values is called Islam. Islam is a din, not just a religion, not just prayers, not just, you know, going haji or whatever, or, 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 and all that. So, and uh, things like rule of law, transparency, accountability, responsibility, and that is all integral in the guiding principles that PAS is, uh, uh, is holding up very dearly, uh, even though many people might not agree, but that is actually in the constitution of PAS. Can yeah. I follow up on that? Because uh, there's also uh, statements or observations that PAS is also uh, a kind of social movement. It, yeah. it provides not just political leadership. Yeah. Um, it might have all some of the religious elements you talked about, but they also provide welfare. Yeah. Could you t- talk us through the kind of welfare ecosystem that PAS has generated over decades mm-hmm. that in many ways is the anchor for the party in terms of who votes for it and who's going to uh, support it? it in times like elections. Okay, thank you, Sharad. Uh, it, all of that is all in the past constitution. So I got to read to you. It's in Bahasa Malaysia. <laughs> okay. So, Fasa uh, 5, Usa-Usa Pas. Dasar dan seruan Pas. Okay, Usa-Usa Pas. Number three. Uh, memupuk dan memperkukuhkan uhwa Islam, ya. That's for the Muslims. Dan menyuburkan rasa perpaduan uh, di kalangan rakyat dan memelihara uh, memelihara uh, kehidupan politik dan masyarakat yang sehat dan berkebajikan talking about welfare berkebajikan it's all in the constitution and uh, number nine there's the clause okay? memperjuangkan hak dan kepentingan umat Islam di negara ini tanpa 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 uh, Tanpa mengabaikan tanggungjawab melaksanakan keadilan terhadap seluruh rakyat Malaysia dan tanggungjawab mewujudkan keharmonian antara kaum uh, di dalam negara ini. So, you got welfare there, you got perpaduan, unity, you got the diversity. PAS is acknowledging that Malaysia has got a diversity of races, cultures, languages. Uh, you know, the whole thing is there. And it's in the constitution. It's not just somebody talking. It's not just me. It's not just the president. It's the constitution. That means uh, if it is not done or if it is not, uh, well, if it, it is left behind by the past leaders, then anybody can mention that and bring it up. Uh, yeah. The thing is, though, um, in terms of statements put out by the party, whether mm-hmm. it's about how people should dress or about, in recent years, uh, recent months, in fact, concerts and whether we should be held, mm-hmm. it sounds like those values don't actually accommodate what people who might not be of the same faith want or how they want to live. So mm-hmm. how will the party reconcile these uh, these sorts of tensions? Okay. What exactly concert were you talking about? Well, I mean, there have been remarks from um, past representatives that concerts should be banned overall, for instance. Not all concerts. Not all concerts. Uh, I think the one in Bukit Jalil, remember? There were some incidents, very uh, tragic incidents of people taking alcohol with drugs and all that. And that was very, uh, very sad, actually. So... 
actually the basic principles i'm talking about basic principles not just isolated uh, incidents okay the basic principles because past has got very little um uh no cannot you know haram very few you can just list them down but the many that you can and you, you have got alternatives there are plenty it's countless actually so uh basically the guiding principle is the concert which cause which can cause Uh, not necessarily all of them, which can cause havoc, which can cause, you know, uh, uh, side effects or uh, something that they might regret, uh, something that uh, that cause, you know, lots of problems, especially the teenagers, because past love the youth. Do do we ban concerts? Do we ban the the the, the children, the, the the teenagers, the youngsters getting together? No. Actually, if you look at uh, uh, one of I think Sharon was asking, which I haven't really answered yet. One of the um, uh, the thing that past youth wing uh, created was called alternative riding club. You got all the rumpets and all that. Okay, they're doing all the. The flying, you know, all kinds of stunts, especially at night, and uh, and that has caused accidents. So, Pas is trying to uh, what you don't not teach, but you know, uh, bring the youth. Yes, you can ride. Yes, you can be on the motorbikes and have fun. But this is the way, and you can also enjoy yourselves. And thousands of them come along. Even just last week, I think, with the MB of Trungano, he was the one who was leading the convoy with the youth. And uh, 10,000 of them. Concerts, singing, and all that. No, we don't. It's not just completely, uh, you went the whole thing, no. There are rules, that's all. I see what uh, you're trying to say in terms of past trying to rechannel some of the energies of youth uh, away from things that you uh, think are undesirable and perhaps it's a consensus. We all don't think that, you know, uh, driving fast is, uh, and doing stunts is uh, a good thing. But what about those that have to do with fundamental liberties, the choice of individuals to make? Concerts often tagged as uh, forms of Western culture that is demonized. Would you agree that the past as a whole is against Western culture? Uh, not everything uh, Western is uh, <laughs> is evil. Because uh, lots of past leaders are from uh, Western universities. Uh, you know, the, the vice presidents and all that. Quite, quite a lot of us are from uh, different continents, actually. Uh, so we know the Western culture. Uh, we're not against all of it. It's only the negative part of it. To prevent uh, what we call it, mafsada, you know, we, we, we call it uh, uh, ills which is uh, in the long term that might come. Not immediately. I mean, you, have, you can enjoy it, you know, all the, the whole night dancing and singing and all that. But at the end of the day, you might be... Uh, Regretting it, you might be having breakups. You might even, you know, uh, end up in with uh, all kinds of nasty things, It's resorting to drugs, resorting to you know, uh, juvenile delinquencies and all that, and maybe in ending up in the lockups. Yeah, and that's uh, not uh, not rare right now, because I was, when I was in ex school in Slango, after two o'clock. Midnight until five o'clock. That was when the youth came together and do all kinds of stuff. And the next day they couldn't go to school. Why? Because they were not sleeping. And uh, uh, they were picked up by, by, by the police because uh, they didn't have license. And who end up uh, going to the police and begging for that that motorbikes to be returned? Their parents. You know that kind of thing. So it's not past. Is not just saying no, 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 no to everything. And uh, well, we have got our our different opinions, of course. You know, uh, but uh, it's not past. Is not is uh, very practical and realistic. Of course, you see, if you say in Kelantan, if there is a majority Muslim area, 
uh, you don't expect the norm there to be the same as in KL. We understand that. <laughs> okay, yeah, and uh, yeah, it's not all the the. We are not uh, you know just uh, avoiding all the Western things. No, if it is technology or things like that, yeah, we are welcoming. Earlier on, we were discussing how um, pass doesn't have doesn't necessarily have these absolutist views on, um, say, for instance, concerts, right? Mm. Uh, we have a couple of people, uh, including MC as well as an anonymous listener, bringing up uh, the point that, yes, the, if, if this is so, then why isn't there more of an effort made to reprimand or, or correct statements being put out by various members in the party? Okay, thank you. Uh, so I know uh, maybe... Quite a lot of people reacted to uh, issues which was blown out of, uh, I think, well, sorry to say, maybe out of the molehill as far as we're concerned. But uh, uh, that was not, we were sort of uh, being uh, pictured as anti, well, anti fun, <laughs> anti. Uh, uh, what 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 else is that? Uh, uh, individual rights, eh? that kind of thing. Now, ba- basically, uh, of course, usually it's the youth who like these uh, concerts and um, all this kind of uh, well uh, recreation and things like that. So, uh, PAS has got a wing. It's got a youth wing. And uh, actually, uh, in past, we're quite disciplined, you know, because not uh, not everybody uh, uh, suddenly react to some issues, you know, out of the blue. There is a, a, a division of, uh, uh, well, uh, say, area, uh, segments, if it is the youth, so let the youth settle it. So we were hoping that the youth is going to, you know, uh, to explain themselves and... Uh, and uh, hopefully it can be accepted by most of the people. Of course, we don't. Ac- uh, we understand that we cannot get hundred percent acceptance. But I'd like to say this: you see, pass is not just um, maybe uh, for 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 certain people. Concert is a big thing, uh, you know, and uh, as if that's the biggest thing. And uh, if pass is. Uh, uh, trying to refrain them from having that concert, that means pass is very evil <laughs> as far as they're concerned, you know, as something that got to be taken, uh, get got re- get and rid of, uh, maybe. Uh, but uh, you see, if you want to uh, to get, we're talking about political parties, we're talking about governing uh, a nation, we are talking about. Uh, Looking after the um, the wealth of the nation, whether you can build it, uh, you know, um, honestly and really looking after the taxpayers' money, uh, what is worth doing, and what is it that you have to give and take, you know. So, uh, hopefully. Uh, maybe you need a, a, a special special session for this, you know, for of these uh, uh, fun things, for these concert things, and what actually is past? Uh, why? Why is past uh, not that um, and that that friendly? Maybe you know, uh, as far as the the is concerned. Can I ask you? Would you yeah. say that it's unfair to characterize past as conservative? Not just in its social policy, I mean, not just in its religious policies, Mm -hmm. but also in its social and cultural policies. Mm -hmm. Is conservative an accurate tag or label? Uh, It's not conservative. Maybe uh, fundamentals, we are sticking to the fundamentals. And there's only a few fundamental or the pillars of Islam which we cannot go against. Like uh, you're talking about uh, doing uh, pakai tudung, yeah, uh, tutu aurat and all that. You so that, that, that's not because Pas is saying, hey, you have to tutu aurat. No, it's not because the president Pas is saying that. It's not the Majlis Shura is uh, saying that. It's because because in the constitution of Pas itself, the 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 uh, the basics of uh, Pas con- constitution is uh, is getting the the SOPs. 
So okay, it's obvious from the Quran and the Hadith. It's the Quran which says that you can't do this, you can't do that. So Pas is trying to navigate, you know, within that framework. Uh, maybe interpretations of certain Muslim leaders might differ from from Pas, but we go by the the fundamentals. We are not conservative just because we are following, you know, what other the past people, the the the, the, the uh, people in the ancient times, you know, not just the culture. It's not it's not that, but because God says that, so that's why Pas has got to adhere to that. That's basically it. Uh, but of course, um, if you look at the other side of Pas, you see, uh, say the Menteri Besar of Trengganu. He's a scientist, he's an engineer, and he's an expert in aerospace, he's Western trained. So uh, he's open-minded. I mean, he's been exposed to all kinds of things in the world. And uh, he's fundamental only a few things. That's why he's also, if you look at that during the um, uh, COVID time, you know, there are 100 uh, of, uh, of GLCs, Trungaru GLCs. And during the PKP time, times, the most GLCs, most uh, companies closed down. But uh, in Trungano, only two was in the red. Hundred was making profits. So that is a past led government. So not everything about past, especially the business people, you know, <laughs> because you see, you don't have to think about the coffee money. You don't have to think think about the one percent, the five percent, from the the decision makers to the clerks and all that. You don't have to think about that. You have that. that there's no hidden cost. So actually, on that point, we do have a voice note. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is from C. Just like to ask uh, Dr. Halima her opinion. On the uh, Saudi Arabia's and UAE's approach of a more advanced, maybe Islam movement, by inviting, having more Western cultures and a more economically sound uh, activities, you know. So, why are we moving backwards instead of forward, like what the uh, more Islamic countries are doing right now? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, UAE, he mentioned UAE and Saudi. Uh, as I said, we are not just following people. Saudis, uh, what Saudi is uh, doing, what UAE is doing, does not necessarily uh, depict what uh, Islam really wants. So uh, that's what I, I can say. So uh, as I mentioned, PAS is uh, based on the guiding principle itself, that, that is uh, the Quran and uh, the teachings and traditions of the Prophet uh, Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him. So, uh, well, the only few things which is PAS is really, really focused on, which is uh, very uh, strict on, that's the fundamentals. But there's so many options of, you know, whether you're going to, what, how do you go grow the economy? How do you develop the, the youth? How do you, uh, well, how do you create revenue and things like that? How do you uh, overcome corruption? I mean, uh, all the things that concerns the Malays, the Chinese, the Indians, and everyone in, in Malaysia, it's also the concern of past, and that's one of the major concerns of past, actually. So you know, the 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 few which you can count actually uh, things that uh, maybe past is notorious about is not necessarily the nest the needs of the people. Maybe it's the ones, but not the needs, not the basic needs. We are going for the basic needs. We want to prosper, and we have we want to have a blessed nation. Uh, you know, makmur, sejahtera, making people happy. And actually, if uh, if I may, uh, this is the keynote of the president's address in our AGM. And he specifically says that, you know, uh, he uh, specifically acknowledged uh, the majmuk of Malaysia. There's no doubt about it. And... Uh, I'm, as I said earlier, I'm not a person who, you know, just follow uh, a figure. 
and uh, you know just swallow everything <laughs> and just follow whatever whether it's right or not. I'm the person who queries things. You know, uh, we got to be scientific and things like that. You know, we got to be rational. We got to be professional because I was trained uh, as a doctor and all that. And I can observe myself. Uh, the president itself, even though he's been demonized <laughs> by uh, people who may not know him personally, I've seen him in the official uh, capacity, uh, in party capacity, and when in the private capacity, when he's alone, uh, you know, you know, he's resting or whether he was being sick and things like things like that, you know, uh, and. I was trying to catch uh, whether there is some flaws or you know something, some uh, incongruency uh, about the, his relationship to the Muslims and the non-Muslims. I have to certify that he is definitely honest. But Dr. What Halima, I mean, you say that. Yeah. But just earlier last month. Um, he actually posted an opinion piece where he said that non-Muslims should be grateful to be given a place in the country. Uh, he claims that not all countries, um, you know, offer this, uh, that the positions of Malay Muslims cannot be challenged. He's also made statements about uh, non-Muslims being uh, the reason for corruption in the country. How does that, um, how do you reconcile that with this concept of a masyarakat majmu? Okay, uh, I mean, I suppose that hurts. Okay, that hurts people, especially when they have already got a, a kind of a uh, picture about him being <laughs> what um, not so friendly, right, uh, to the non-Muslims. Okay, uh, to put it in context, okay, to put it in context, maybe um, he was saying it factually. You know, he doesn't mean to hurt people. I have to say that he cares about everybody and that I got to certify because I've seen him in different kind of conditions. When he said that, you know, just like, okay, say, say in Australia, because you know, that's where I'm familiar with, uh, we got aborigines, okay? There's the original people of the Australian uh, continent and uh, the British came, okay? And now they're the rulers, right? Okay. So, of course, now you have the rights of the aborigines. They have got the, 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 the rights, the specific uh, laws and all that to protect their rights. I think that's what he really meant. But now, of course, the aborigines are minority. <laughs> you know, people who come uh, and, uh, well, live there and grow there and prosper there, are the majority, whereas in Malaysia, the most the Malays, we took it because it was a Malay land, right? Uh, the Malay, uh, Malaysia uh, is a Malay land, so they are still the majority, and uh, people who come later, uh, minority. I think that's what he meant. I think, oh uh, well, I have to uh, apologize if that was meant. Uh, uh, to make the non-Malays and non-Muslims not happy about it, but I don't think he meant it. He meant it. So, yeah. what you the narrative that you just uh, outlined makes it uh, sound very much uh, in line with what an ethno-nationalist, a Malay nationalist, would say with regard to Malaysia. To what extent is PAS as much a Malay nationalist party as it is an Islamic movement, as you put it earlier? Okay, let me put it this way, just to continue what I was saying, you know. Uh, the pr past president is a president. Okay, he is a figure there. Uh, in past, we have got our central committee. And, uh, you know, uh, we decide uh, when we uh, have this meeting and uh, big matters, we discuss about it, Okay. So PAS is not just the president, it's not just the vice president, it's not just the uh, uh, Murshid al Arm. It's, that's not one person. We've got one million, more than one million actually members. And uh, we have got different committees, you know. Uh, and I'm in charge of 
National Unity Committee. And for your information, uh, during uh, the uh, Chinese New Year and things like that, we bought uh, that just red uh, garments, Chinese red garments, for the president, and he wore it. And uh, uh, he basically, maybe because he's not used to, not like the uh, Togurinik Aziz, you know, he's not used to mixing with uh, different kind of races and not accustomed maybe to the different cultures and all that. But he doesn't intend to offend the non Malays and non Muslims. It was just the facts, he was just stating the facts. It's not that because he wants to annoy the non Malays and non Muslim. Because what he uh, he teaches us is uh, nobody writes a form that I want to be an Indian, I want to be a Chinese, I want to be a, a, a Malay, and things like that. Because you were given that to a, the, that kind of family with the kind of skin color, with the kind of like me, got sepet sepet. <laughs> you know, we didn't choose it. Yeah. Can we ask you, talk about annoyance and hurt. Sanusi, the Mantri Basa of Kada plays a very different role. Wouldn't you agree that, in fact, he is a bit of a provocateur? Uh, maybe to, to his foes, his political foes. If you see him personally, and especially to, the, to his rights, to the people who he really, really cares for, the poor people, the students and all that, he is a hero. He's a kind man. But don't disturb him. <laughs> he will jump up and really, really, you know, uh, fight back. He's just fighting back. That's all. I wanted to ask, um, if indeed PASS is still interested in reaching out to non-Muslim voters, mm-hmm. we um, are. are there then conversations, experiences that are happening? What have you had with non-Muslim voters who currently aren't supportive of PASS? Um, mm-hmm. Because... I have to admit, there is a fair amount of disillusionment among mm. many non-Muslim voters. Okay, actually, for your information, we have got one day one. We got the Muslimat, we got uh, the ulama, we got the uh, youth, and we got day one himpunan penukung pas, and they do under- understand us. Besides the issues that you have been talking about, the controversies and all that, you know, uh, the tensions, uh, including racial tens- and tensions, especially when the chairman of one political party was saying that we, with the green wave, if it is going to go into P- Baha, uh, Penang, then uh, you won't have the Tokong if they're not happy with it. That is not true because in, in Kelantan, the, the non-Muslims are the minorities and you've got the biggest uh, reclining Buddha, the sleeping Buddha and the sitting Buddha. It's all there th- for 33 years that Paz has been governing Kelantan. He wasn't disturbed at all, including churches, including the temples, uh, the, the Indian temples in Kuala Krai and all that. He wasn't disturbed at all. And all those uh, non malays and non-Muslims kind of uh, accept uh, Tok Guru Nik Aziz. But don't forget, he was just a Murshid al Am. The president at that time was still the president of past right now. You know, uh, he's the, 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 the one, he's the executive, he's the one who can say, okay, okay, get rid of it. No, he didn't that. Uh, they did, didn't do that. Pinning, well, uh, uh, the Malays may be a 50-50, you know, the non-Muslims are more, but he could have easily done that in Kelantan because they were a very minority, just less than 5%. So that was not done by PAS. And that's not how PAS is doing. For your information, from, from the President's words, because uh, I've got to share with you this, uh, PAS is there in the political arena to prevent extremism. ISIS is not PAS. Daesh is not PAS. PAS does want the Muslims in this country to be like that. Actually, PAS is the moderate one. I think, um, you know, a lot of questions coming through about the upcoming state elections. So uh, a lot of ground to cover. Let's start with this voice note that's come in. This is from Saiful. Assalamualaikum to Dr. Halima and very good afternoon to all the listeners. I just want to ask uh, to Dr. Halima, what are the narrative that PAS want to play around on this party in this part of uh, PRN this this time? Because most of the statement that come up towards the social media and of course the sentiment that play during this coming up uh, PRN, including the last PRU, is more towards sentiments of religions and sentiments of 
races. So I just want to ask, where does the past stand on the policy? And I want to hear more about the policy and what you want to do and how you want to do it. Because for me, in this current sentiment, current state of general election or politics, most of the rakyat is already know and already have ways to know about the way uh, knowledgeable because we want to know what you are able to do and not blaming on others or not blaming on the sentiment itself because for us we are Malaysian 60% of population yes we are being Putra but we have 40% of others than that and they are still related as Malaysian thank you Assalamualaikum thank you uh, for your question uh, that is a very relevant question. I think it plays uh, uh, well central uh, to the voters, uh, especially in the West Coast. Yeah. So basically, uh, as I mentioned earlier, PAS is a, a princip- principle-centered uh, party, and uh, we stand by the the equality. This. Uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, uh, to Shamila, Pass for All is a slogan which needs to be felt by uh, the people of Malaysia. And yes, I admit that maybe we have not been able to be, uh, to be depicting ourselves to, to, to realize that, uh, that slogan to the fullest yet. And maybe because that was not the, 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 the major focus of Pass. Uh, uh, yet, but uh, it is a true uh, mission. Uh, pass for all means for all races, for all cultures, uh, East and West of Malaysia, uh, inclusive, you know, and uh, for even to the different cultures and the different religions, because pass uh, uh, abides to what uh, the Quran says that. It is Allah. It is, it is the God for everyone uh, who has created male for, uh, and uh, from male and female and creates all with different colors, different creed and different languages, different skin colors. And that is in the Quran. And Paz has got to abide by that. And uh, so what is the narrative? You're asking about the narrative. The narrative is... Uh, we have to have good guidance. Uh, we have to have good governance. We have to be... Uh, we don't make manifestos just to fulfill people's imagination. What has... A, we give an example of the Trangano. The manifestos which, which was uh, being uh, done uh, on uh, for PRU 14 was 100% fulfilled. So we don't just make promises for the sake of the the the, the elections. Uh, that is how past tense. And now with the Perikatan National, that is what we are trying to do. You see, uh, we are we are concerned about the people's money. We are concerned about the, the 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 power, the rule of law. Uh, it's not just uh, people with power who has got to have this uh, being protected by the law. Uh, the rule of law means it applies to everybody. And uh, justice uh, has got to be impartial and justice got to be done for everyone. And uh, when, uh, you know, uh, that, that was one when, when I said initially, because when I was part of and my husband was uh, the, uh, the candidate, <laughs> that was during the reformacy time, of course we were there with... Uh, um, that time was uh, PKR, was Keadilan, Keadilan because before they become a uh, party Keadilan Rakyat. Okay? So uh, we have been consistent all along the way. I think what Saiful though wants to know is if there's going to be a new narrative, mm-hmm. uh, how is it going to also provide a sense of what PAS will bring to the table for, say, Selangor, mm-hmm. in terms of an economic agenda? Mm-hmm. We haven't heard sufficiently from PAS and Perikatan about their economic agenda that di- is distinct from what Pakatan Harapan and its new uh, partners, uh, Barisan National, have put on the table in terms of an economic agenda. Okay. I was part of the Selangor government during uh, Tanzri Khalid's time uh, as an ESCO Pendidikan. 
pendidikan tinggi pembangunan modal insan. We took over in 2008 from Barisan National. Uh, at that time, the uh, the culture was very different. The working culture was very different. A lot of uh, losses here and then. I'm just going to give you a, a, a general uh, overlook of what we had to do, what the late Tansri Khaled had got to do. What he what he did was he had this political willpower by uh, by uh, by which he. Uh, seriously mentioned to everybody in his uh, domain of power, which means the uh, YDP, the mayor, the DOs, on and all the head uh, of the departments. No nonsense. And the file has got to be the first in, first out. So you don't have to pay 10%, 1%, how many percent of it. Uh, that is how it works here. And by the time, uh, uh, after six years, I think, uh, before the Langka Kajang, okay, Selangor could make money. And I was part of it. It was not easy. You see, okay, uh, to talk about the economy, first of all, you have to generate the revenues, right? And you have to prevent losses. And you have to make sure the culture is not just... Uh, leaking you know whatever you have is always leaking so at the end of the day you can you don't have much to to give to the people to make uh, to to make uh, to give good services and uh, to create jobs and things like that so the agenda i can't really talk about the, the slang uh, because i'm from the central so i can i i, I can't uh, say much about the slang thing but the basic thing is uh, the basic thing is Create revenue, get the able people, the technocrats, people who know how to do their job, get them and give empower them and uh, make sure, you know, you can have good policies, you can have lots of plans, the master plans, the blueprints, whatever. At the end of the day, if you don't have the, 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 uh, the people who is going to do the real job, being honest, uh, committed, and, uh, you know, just not uh, coming to work for the sake of coming, but really going to co accomplish the mission of serving the rakyat, yes, you can do much better. Okay, Selangor can be the richest, can be the most developed, but you know, with the, with a, a, a good governance, uh, with people who are really rakyat centric. Because during my time, uh, you don't have to register to get uh, free water. Everybody is there. And SMUE, Skim Masra Usimas, whereby the, uh, the worker mass will get 2,500, well, upon the death, you know. That's to help with the burials and things like that. Yeah. But now it's not that much. So I can't be specific because I'm not there to, you know, to, be, to be the Selangor champions, but uh, that's the, 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 uh, the framework. We are nearly out of time, but I did want to close with this voice note. Uh, we have this from Azira. Hi, Dr. Halima. Assalamualaikum. Um, I am a Malay Muslim. Um, I just have um, something to share or a question, maybe. I was wondering if the approach that PASS can take could be more softer because um, Islam in Malaysia has seen as being provocative, as seen uh, as being um, behind or lagging. So even from the teachings, or even when we look at the stories of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, um, the way he spread Islam isn't through force, but it was more through his demeanor. It was through the way he spoke, which was softer, and yeah, it was softer and not as provocative as um, a lot of people see past as now. Thank you, Azira. I completely agree with you, except for the last one. Uh, 
am I provocative? <laughs> Maybe you're looking at special, uh, well, a, a few isolated uh, figures and, and some of them might not even be in past right now, have, or have already left past. And the, the people who, have, who was the, the loudest, you know, criticizing the opponents of past, actually are not in past anymore. And uh, and I uh, totally agree with you. I uh, that's exactly what, uh, uh, in line with me. I really sing with you. You know, uh, we we really want to emulate what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was doing and his uh, his his companions. We are trying our best, and I uh, implore um, Azira and all of you around there outside there, please. Study past, get it from the right sources, get it from the horse's mouth, and not just from the maybe the uh, social media, and not maybe from the dramatized, oh, a dramatized <laughs> version uh, of the uh, sensational events, incidents, you know, because uh, we really, really want to have a moderate uh, we want to have a moderate but principle centered okay and it, it, it's not that we want to what uh, provocative no i don't think so that's not the culture of past it's not at all please look at the sources thank you so much dr halima thanks for joining us today thank you thank you thank you so much